Inception is a 2010 science fiction action film written and directed by Christopher Nolan. The film stars Leonardo DiCaprio as a professional thief who steals information by infiltrating the subconscious of his target. He is offered a chance to have his criminal history erased as payment for the implantation of another person's idea into a target's subconscious. Nolan had been fascinated with the nature of dreams for a long time before writing Inception. I wanted to do this for a very long time. It's something I've thought about off and on since I was about 16, he told the Los Angeles Times. I wrote the first draft of this script seven or eight years ago, but it goes back much further. This idea of approaching dream and the dream life as another state of reality. Initially, Nolan wrote an 80-page treatment about dream stealers. He had originally envisioned Inception as a horror film, but eventually wrote it as a heist even though he found that. Traditionally, they are very deliberately superficial in emotional terms. Upon reviewing his script, he decided that basing it in that genre did not work because the story relies so heavily on the idea of the interior state, the idea of dream and memory. I realized I needed to raise the emotional stakes. Nolan worked on the script for 10 years. When he first started thinking about making the film, he was influenced by that era of movies where you had The Matrix, you had Dark City, you had The 13th Floor, and to a certain extent, you had Memento too. They were based in the principles that the world around you might not be real. Nolan first pitched the film to Warner Brothers in 2001, but decided that he needed more experience making large-scale films, and embarked on Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. He soon realized that a film like Inception needed a large budget because, as soon as you're talking about dreams, the potential of the human mind is infinite, and so the scale of the film has to feel infinite. It has to feel like you could go anywhere by the end of the film, and it has to work on a massive scale. After making The Dark Knight, Nolan decided to make Inception and spent six months completing the script. Nolan said that the key to completing the script was wondering what would happen if several people shared the same dream. Once you remove the privacy, you've created an infinite number of alternative universes in which people can meaningfully interact, with validity, with weight, with dramatic consequences. Nolan had been trying to work with Leonardo DiCaprio for years and met him several times, but was unable to recruit him for any of his films until Inception. DiCaprio finally agreed because he was intrigued by this concept, this dream heist notion, and how this character's going to unlock his dream world and ultimately affect his real life. I wrote the script because I did, based it on this idea of a heist movie set in the world of dreams. And the problem with a heist movie is they tend to be procedural, they tend to be deliberately superficial. And so it took me a long time to realize that when you're dealing with the world of dreams, that's not enough, you need emotion. And so the central character played by Leonardo DiCaprio became the most important part of making the story relatable for the audience. You read the script and found it to be very well written, comprehensive, but you really had to have Chris in person to try to articulate some of the things that have been swirling around his head for the last eight years. DiCaprio and Nolan spent months talking about the screenplay. Nolan took a long time rewriting the script in order to make sure that the emotional journey of DiCaprio's character was the driving force of the movie. Principal photography began in Tokyo on June 19, 2009, with a scene in which Sato first hires Cobb during a helicopter flight over the city. The production moved to the United Kingdom and shot in a converted airship hangar in North London. There, the hotel bar set, which tilted 30 degrees, was built. A hotel corridor was also constructed. It rotated a full 360 degrees to create the effect of alternate directions of gravity for scenes set during the second level of dreaming. The idea was inspired by a technique used in Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey. Nolan said, I was interested in taking those ideas, techniques, and philosophies and applying them to an action scenario. The filmmakers originally planned to make the hallway only 40 feet long, but as the action sequence became more complicated, the hallway's length was increased to 100 feet. The corridor was suspended along eight large concentric rings that were spaced equidistantly outside its walls and powered by two massive electric motors. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who plays Arthur, 
spent several weeks learning to fight in a corridor that spun like a giant hamster wheel. Nolan said of the device, It was like some incredible torture device. We thrashed Joseph for weeks, but in the end we looked at the footage, and it looks unlike anything any of us has seen before. The rhythm of it is unique, and when you watch it, even if you know how it was done, it confuses your perceptions. It's unsettling in a wonderful way. When you talk about dreams, you immediately start to think that the uh, that world is infinite, that anything is possible. What was interesting about Chris's take on this dream world and what he was very specific with us about is that it had its own set of rules that um, you immediately start to talk about the human subconscious and entering the dream world and you think, you know, we could be flying around in other galaxies with mystical creatures and, you know, insane settings, but he wanted to be very deeply rooted in things we understood. Filming moved to France, where they shot Cobb entering the College of Architecture and the pivotal scenes between Ariadne and Cobb in a bistro, and lastly on the burr hakim Bridge. For the explosion that takes place during the bistro scene, local authorities would not allow the use of real explosives. High-pressure nitrogen was used to create the effect of a series of explosions. The production staged a multi-vehicle car chase on the streets of downtown Los Angeles, which involved a freight train crashing down the middle of a street. To do this, the filmmakers configured a train engine on the chassis of a tractor trailer. The replica was made from fiberglass molds taken from authentic train parts and matched in terms of color and design. The ski chase sequence was inspired by Nolan's favorite James Bond film, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. What I liked about it that we've tried to emulate in this film is there's a tremendous balance in that movie of action and scale and romanticism and tragedy and emotion. For dream sequences in Inception, Nolan used little computer-generated imagery, preferring practical effects whenever possible. Nolan said, It's always very important to me to do as much as possible in camera, and then, if necessary, computer graphics are very useful to build on or enhance what you have achieved physically. To this end, visual effects supervisor Paul Franklin built a miniature of the Mountain Fortress set and then blew it up for the film. For the fight scene that takes place in Zero Gravity, he used CG-based effects to subtly bend elements like physics, space and time. The most challenging effect was the Limbo City level at the end of the film, because it continually developed during production. Franklin had artists build concepts while Nolan expressed his ideal vision something glacial, with clear modernist architecture, but with chunks of it breaking off into the sea like icebergs. Franklin and his team ended up with something that looked like an iceberg version of Gotham City with water running through it. They created a basic model of a glacier, and then designers created a program that added elements like roads, intersections and ravines until they had a complex, yet organic-looking cityscape. Nolan drew inspiration from the works of Jorge Luis Borges, including The Secret Miracle, The Circular Ruins, Blade Runner, and The Matrix. While Nolan has not confirmed this, it has also been suggested by many observers that the movie draws heavy inspiration from the 26 animated film Paprika. I forget which great old Hollywood mogul was quoted as saying he wanted a film that began with an earthquake and then built to a climax. Uh, we literally just tried to do that. I mean, to the point of there is an earthquake at the beginning of the film. I wanted to start as big as possible and really throw people into um, the world of Inception, the idea that in this world of dreams, the most massive things are, are possible. Think about it now. The score for Inception was written by Hans Zimmer, who described his work as a very electronic, dense score, filled with nostalgia and sadness to match Cobb's feelings throughout the film. Zimmer's music was nominated for an Academy Award in the Best Original Score category in 2011, losing to Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross of The Social Network. The film cuts to the closing credits from a shot of the top, apparently starting to show an ever so faint wobble, inviting speculation about whether the final sequence was reality or another dream. 
Nolan confirmed that the ambiguity was deliberate, saying, I've been asked the question more times than I've ever been asked any other question about any other film I've made. What's funny to me is that people really do expect me to answer it. The film's script concludes with, behind him, on the table, the spinning top is still spinning, and we fade out. Nolan said, I put that cut there at the end, imposing an ambiguity from outside the film. That always felt the right ending to me, it always felt like the appropriate kick. The real point of the scene, and this is what I tell people, is that Cobb isn't looking at the top. He's looking at his kids. He's left it behind. That's the emotional significance of the thing. A viral marketing campaign was employed for the film. After the revelation of the first teaser trailer, in August 2009, the film's official website featured only an animation of Cobb's spinning top. In December, the top toppled over and the website opened the online game Mind Crime, which upon completion revealed Inception's poster. More pieces of viral marketing began to surface before Inception's release, such as a manual filled with bizarre images and text sent to Wired magazine, and the online publication of posters, ads, phone applications, and strange websites all related to the film. Warner also released an online prequel comic, Inception, The Cobalt Job. Inceptions was released in both conventional and IMAX theaters on July the 16th, 2010. Inception grossed over $837 million worldwide, becoming the fourth highest grossing film of 2010. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds a critic rating of 87% based on 373 reviews, with an audience score of 91%. The website reads, Smart, innovative, and thrilling, Inception is that rare summer blockbuster that succeeds viscerally as well as intellectually. Considered one of the best films of the 2010s, Inception won four Oscars and was nominated for four more at the 83rd Academy Awards. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We also have exclusive videos on our Patreon.